When you're playing guitar, often your fingers just won't do what you want them to do. Don't get frustrated. Today I'm going to show you the four most common issues I see with students fretting fingers, and these can slow your playing down massively. At the end I'll show you a quick exercise that you can do every day to help get those fingers under control. Number one, the inflexible DIP. This joint is called the distal interphalangeal joint or the DIP joint, and its flexibility or lack of flexibility is one of the main causes for bad technique. Even playing this basic C major chord, with an inflexible DIP, the fingers drop down and end up touching the strings below, so you get that accidental muting, which I'm sure you're well aware of. But worse than that, long term, with an inflexible DIP, many guitarists try to compensate by overbending the wrist to get those fingers in position. And holding the wrist in this position for long periods of time can lead to carpal tunnel syndrome, which can be debilitating. And you can test how flexible your DIP joint is straight away just by trying to hold that DIP joint around 90 degrees. But like everything today, it's going to take a lot of time to get that joint under control because it takes flexibility and strength that you may not have yet. It's like I can't do the splits because I haven't got the strength and flexibility, even if you gave me one million dollars to try to do it. I ain't gonna be doing the splits. And to make it easier from now on, I'm gonna be referring to the fingers based on numbers. So this is your first finger, second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. Number two, the seesaw. Let's say you're playing this riff, Do I Wanna Know by the Arctic Monkeys. So if we focus on this part, many less experienced guitarists would play it like this. So when the fourth finger goes down, the first finger flies off the fretboard and then struggles to get back in time. And when it does, then the third finger flies off. So we get this seesaw motion. And that's why it's called the seesaw. It's pretty literal. Well, duh. This really slows students down because the first finger has to travel all this way and then the fourth finger has to then travel all this way. So it just makes the notes super choppy and uneven. Instead you want to think about anchoring your first finger. So when you play these notes, you're pivoting off that first finger. And by keeping it down, it just makes the notes much smoother and it'll also help you play faster as well. It is okay though if the first finger moves up and down a little bit. Number three, the bunch. Now try and play this other side riff by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now, less experienced guitarists will play the note on the 7th fret fine, but when they play the note on the 4th fret, their fingers bunch up and then have to travel all the way back to play the note on the 7th fret. So basically my 4th finger is struggling to hold its position over the 7th fret. This bunching will obviously slow you down because every time you play notes that are spread apart, you have to go in and then go out again. Number four, the bird. Before the bird, if you find this video helpful, please help me out by giving this video a thumbs up. The bird occurs when you play notes with your first and fourth fingers, and then your middle finger just pops up. This is an issue that I have with my fingers, and while I've got better with it over the years, it's something that I still work on to improve. Like the seesaw, the issue with the bird is that if I want to play a note with my middle finger now, once the finger is up, it needs to travel all the way back down again, which can really slow down your playing. The hand is a very complex structure of nerves and tendons, and some interconnected nerves. I find that some students may not have an issue with the middle finger flying up, but instead the fourth finger will hook in when they're play notes on the third finger. But whatever your issues are with your fingers, it's important to try to identify what they are so then you can work on them with exercises so you get rid of those inefficiencies. And let me know in the comments your most frustrating finger issue and I might do a future video on it. Bonus tip. One thing I see from guitarists who've been playing for about a year or so is they still look at the neck a lot and they kind of tilt the guitar back a little bit which forces a hand into an unnecessarily awkward position. So you can either try and take a bit of a leap of faith and try and stop looking at the fretboard so much, which is just a good overall idea, or try and get over the guitar a little bit more so you can get your fingers into a better position, especially with the DIP joint. The exercise. Now the exercise I find best to work on these fingering issues is called the reverse spider walk. Now these kind of exercises are often presented as, I tried this simple exercise and now I'm in polyphia. But that stuff isn't true, well not from at least what I've seen. There's no doubt that they help, but they complement the other aspects of your playing. And they're not a solution to making you play as fast as Ichiko Nito. So the great is a 10 minute warm up exercise or watching the television at the end of the day, but they still need time to make progress. So let's start on the 7th fret because the frets are spaced more closely there. And we start on the high strings because they're easier to play than the lower strings. So the exercise gets more difficult as you go along. 
and just place one finger at a time and just do your best at keeping that DIP joint rounded and then keeping all the fingers as close as possible to the fretboard without it feeling painful. Because your first finger is being held down, it's teaching it to stay down. And it's also helping you avoid the bunch as your fingers are spreading. It's really important, like really, really super important to work on this slowly because you, if you do it fast and inaccurately, it doesn't actually teach your fingers to do anything at all. And it's just kind of a waste of time. And no one's going to be that impressed if you can play a one finger per fret exercise really fast. Hooray! And my thumb is behind my middle finger, a little bit more than halfway up the neck. And remember to try to keep that wrist straight as much as possible. When you get to the top, you can then work on taking your fingers off one by one. And once again, really focus on keeping the fingers down and over their respective frets. It's likely at the start you'll need to kind of spread your hands and maybe move them a little bit side to side, and that's okay. And that's because you just haven't developed that flexibility yet, and that's going to come. And you just continue like this for the rest of the exercise. And you might be finding that with your bar chords, you're also running into a lot of challenges to get them clean. And if that's the case, I would check out this video next and see you in the next one.